All right, I am back. This will be sort of the companion piece to the uh, batter stats video. Today we'll be looking at pitchers, and instead of going uh, maybe off the cuff with my searches, I've actually just shortlisted a few people that I want to look at. Uh, this is still that same save. We're at the end of 2019. So first pitcher I'm going to look at is Corey Kluber. And uh, when I look at a pitcher, if I want to really get a good idea of what kind of value he's given the team um, for the year, I, I will honestly just look at like innings pitched and ERA. Those are two I'm going to look at for sure because it's very important to... Um, if you have a pitcher who's a stud, you want to make sure they stay healthy. You want to make sure they get a lot of innings. And 200 is a lot of innings in today's game. I think anything over 180 is a pretty damn big workload. So we see that Kluber as a starter has been able to shoulder this big workload. Uh, he's getting, you know, 200 innings plus these last three years from 2017 to 2019. That's terrific. Um... Yeah, and then ERA, very simply, the rate at which you allow earned runs. Uh, your average ERA is going to be about four and a half. Anything at about three or below is going to be pretty elite. So you can see 2018, 347, 2019, 284. Uh, really good pitching. Uh, and then, um, so after that, we have a Whip. I do like to look at Whip. Uh, whip is walks and hits over innings pitched. It's essentially the rate at which you allow base runners, and it's actually kind of a, a good companion to on-base percentage. If you think about a pitcher's job as being to prevent base runners, uh, this is a stat that'll tell you exactly how often base runners are allowed per inning. So uh, an average whip is gonna be about 1.3, uh, and if you, as you get into more elite range, that's gonna be around 1.1, 1.5 whip, that's usually not that great. So, um, as you can see, 2017.87, best in the league, 1.15, still really good, 1.04, yeah, it's just fantastic stuff. So, um, yeah, that's what that stat means. Uh, it's one you'll see a lot on some sort of like the newer baseball shows, like if you're watching MLB Now or whatever, they'll talk about what someone's whip is, so that's what that means. Uh, another thing I want to look at is uh, home runs per nine innings, walks per nine innings, and strikeouts per nine innings. Um, you don't need to necessarily get a lot of strikeouts to be a good pitcher, but it certainly helps. Those are just balls that aren't going to be put in play when you strike someone out. Um, and Kluber has a fantastic strikeout rate, 11.7 to 10.4 to 8.5. So it's actually it's dropping off uh, as he gets older, but that's okay uh, because he's keeping the walks down. I like to take a look at how many you know strikeouts uh, someone is getting versus how many walks they're getting because there's a lot of pitchers who strike a lot of guys out but they walk a lot of guys too and that's a little uh, counterproductive but Kluber doesn't have that problem he he walks very few hitters as you can see 1.6 1.9 these are very much at the lower range of what you would expect a, a bad um, walks per nine inning would be anything above like four I think above four that's you're starting to sort of lose control there and then home runs per nine innings good home run prevention as well He's keeping about one per nine inning. Um, and these three stats right here uh, are the component stats of uh, an advanced stat that's called fielding, fielding Independent Pitching, or FIP for short. And we can actually take a look at his uh, FIP, Fielding Independent Pitching. We go to View, under his Pitching Stats, and Expanded Pitching Stats too. Uh, this is also very easily, perhaps more easily viewed in the context of the pitching screen itself. So, um, fielding independent pitching, 2017, it was uh, his best over these last three years. That's 2.59. Fielding independent pitching is um, built on the same sort of scale that earned run average is, where uh, 4.5 is going to be about the average. You know, three anything like three or below is just going to be elite. So, 2.59, 3.16, 3.28. These are both, uh, I mean, these are all three very good fielding independent pitchings, but it does suggest that uh, he was better in 2017. Um, so how fielding independent pitching works is it essentially just looks at your home runs per nine innings, walks per nine innings, strikeouts per nine innings. There's a whole formula. I don't know it, uh, <laughs> but it's just those three numbers and it spits out your fielding independent pitching. Uh, so it, if you think about it as just, uh, it's 
as the name says, it's, this is pitching independent of fielding. No fielding involved when you surround, surrender a home run. No fielding involved when you walk someone. No fielding involved when you strike someone out. So um, having quality fielding or bad fielding behind you can affect your run average a lot. So um, fielding independent pitching is uh, a good way to look at a pitcher, although it does have sort of its uh, limitations, and we're going to explore that uh, in this video. But yeah, as you can see, good fielding independent pitching and his wins above replacement, 7.5, 5.4, 5.5. Uh, all really good. 2017 being his best, and I would agree. 2017 was his best of these last three. That's 200 innings with 2.25 ERA, 0.87 whip. Uh, great year. Uh, I'll also just call attention to batting average on balls and plates. Fluctuated a bit here. Um, he's... 260s these two years, but 3.28, and that's um, you know from a luck perspective could explain why that ERA is has gone above three. Uh, yeah, it's just something to look at, and WAR does take that into account, and I'll talk about how WAR works in this game because uh, it's it's pretty important to understand for pitchers. I think even more so than hitters. All right, Carlos Carrasco is who we're going to take a look at today. Uh, Corey Kluber's teammate, fantastic. And we're going to be looking at 2019 only. So, um, as you can see, 173 innings, 4.56 ERA. So that's pretty average. Uh, you would expect someone who does this, you know, about 170 innings, 4.5 earned run average, to have about two wins above replacement. But Carlos Carrasco has 3.5. So how, how has he done that? Well, let's take a look at his strikeouts per nine innings. 9.4, that's good. Walks per nine innings, 2.0, that's really good. Home runs per nine innings, 1.3. That's still uh, pretty good. So even though his earned run at... Oh, wow. Let's talk about ERA+. Plus. Uh, yeah. This might be a video you... Um, if you're really not familiar with these numbers, you might want to watch a couple of times. I'm, I'm trying to make these concise, but at the same time, uh, it's also important to be thorough. So earned run average plus, we talked about OPS+. plus. This is the equivalent, 100 being average. Uh, you know, you get to 120s, 130s, that's great. You're probably an all-star. And then if you're, uh, you know, uh, 150, 160, you know, you could be a Cy Young winner. So uh, very similar, very similar scale. So his earn run average plus 104. And that is, um, yeah, uh, right around average, just slightly above average. So everything about this season says average if you look at his ERA innings pitched. Uh, earned run average plus. So the question is, how does he still have three and a half war? So, um, out of the park baseball uses what's called F war, uh, which is short for Fangraphs war. Fangraphs being a baseball advanced statistics sabermetrics website slash blog. Uh, there's a few measures of war. The most, the other most common being B war, which is baseball reference war, and they calculate theirs differently. Uh, and in particular. Uh, Fangraph's war for pitchers does not use ERA. I like to use ERA when uh, assessing pitchers, but Fangraph's war uses fielding independent pitching. And if you go and we take a look at that for Carrasco, we'll see that his fielding independent pitching was 3.76, which is a lot lower than his 4.5 or whatever he uh, had for his ERA, uh, which is because he had really solid ratios as, in terms of his strikeouts, his walks, and his home runs. Um, now here's sort of your um, limitations and why it's important to look at both fielding and pitching and ERA, especially when you're looking at starting pitchers. Um, what you've had on the field transpire is a guy throw 173 innings and allow four and a half uh, earned runs per uh, nine innings. Uh, very average starter's performance. Um, but you can see that underlying, he actually pitched pretty well. So what Fangraph's war and what filling independent pitching really are better used as, in my opinion, are predictive stats. So this suggests that he'll do better next year because, well, he pitched very solid. So if he can just do that again, his numbers will be solid. His ERA will probably be more around 3.7-ish. Um, and then, but the problem is if you're assessing the value of what actually transpired on the field, 170 innings, average ERA, so, um, yeah, it's, you would be kind of um, disappointed to have 
someone tell you, oh, he was actually worth three and a half wins, even though what happened on the field was completely average, more along what you'd expect for a pitcher worth two wins. Uh, th- hopefully that makes sense. But fielding independent pitching and uh, fan graphs war are better used as predictive stats rather than telling you the value of what a player actually did for that year. That's just my opinion. Um, which is why I like to look at just straight up ERA and in innings pitched. Um, because that'll at least tell me, give me a good idea of what the value is for that year. Uh, so we're going to look at Steven Strasburg. Um, he was sort of deployed as both a starter and a reliever at points during the season, but uh, in total he had 167 innings pitched, 3.7 ERA. Um, so that's good. I mean, that's good. That's a pretty good season. Kept that ERA under 4. Um, but then we take a look at his ERA+. plus. Also good, 116, above average. But let's take a look at that wins above replacement, and you'll see that he's actually negative. And once again, you're going to say, how can that be? Well, let's take a look at his strikeouts per nine innings, 5.1, not good. Uh, Walks per nine innings, 2.5, not bad per se, but I mean, when you put that together with only 5.1 strikeouts per nine innings, uh, that's a lot of balls that are just going into play. Uh, And then home runs per nine innings, uh, 1.4, that's, I don't know, I reckon that's probably about average, maybe a little above average. So um, if you look at his pitching stats, we're going to see that his fielding independent pitching on the year was actually 4.93, which is uh, poor. Yeah, uh, it's it's below average for sure. Um and then we can also take a look at his batting average on balls in play. Now, do you remember when we were talking about that for hitters? Same kind of goes for pitchers. So um, you'll see over here, in terms of other pitching ratings, pitchers have a ground ball slash uh, fly ball tendency. He's neutral, so you would expect his batting average on balls in play to be around 300, maybe a little bit lower because he was such a dominant pitcher earlier in, her, earlier in his career. Um, you can see he's falling apart now, but <laughs> um, fly ball pitchers, they're going to have a lower batting average on balls in play, probably at the risk of more home runs. Uh, and then ground ball pitchers, they're going to have higher batting average balls in play, but they'll allow less home runs. So um, as you can see, 2.63 batting average in balls in play is really low, so that suggests there was an amount of luck. As you can see from the strikeouts and the uh, walks and the home runs, a lot of balls were put in play. He wasn't striking out a lot of guys, he wasn't walking a lot of guys. Fielders had to do a lot of work for him. And um, as a result, they did quite well for them. There was an element of luck. So it's suggesting that he's basically getting bailed out by good fielding and some luck. And that's what this war tells you. Now, what transpired on the field, 170 innings pitched, you know, 3.7 earned run average, that's good. I mean, that's a good performance, 116 ERA+. plus. But uh, this is telling you that don't expect that to happen again next year. So once again... Fielding independent pitching and uh, F4 uh, alongside it, better used as predictive stats, in my opinion. All right, so, uh, but what, where I will use fielding independent pitching is absolutely with relief pitchers. So I have two relief pitchers with very small sample sizes here, and this is why fielding independent pitching is still so important to the game. And I highly recommend you look at fielding independent pitching above uh, earned run average for relief pitchers because it's a much smaller sample size of data. Um, So this guy named Brad Week and this guy named Josh Schmoker, I'm not too familiar with them, Um, but Brad Week threw 36 innings and he had an ERA, as I load up the page, of 4.17, so uh, about average for a reliever. Whip, 1.15, that's pretty good. Um, And then you look at his strikeouts per nine innings, 10.1, that's good. 5.2 walks per nine innings, that's really bad. Uh, 2.5 home runs per nine innings, that's also really bad. Um, So even though you have this ERI plus of 115, which is above average, his wins above replacement, negative 0.7. Uh, and you look at that, I mean, batting average of balls in play and at one point, sorry, at point one four one is completely unsustainable. Uh, there's absolutely no way he would be able to do that for the next, say, 40 innings or so. We can take a look at his uh, pitching stats, his, um, where is his, okay, yeah, his fielding independent pitching, 6.28. 
uh, really bad. So if I had a pitcher like Brad Week on my team where he's thrown this 36 innings where he's appeared to be getting very lucky, I, I would either send him down to AAA or I would... Um, he would have such an incredibly short leash where the moment he sort of starts to regress to the mean, I know it's going to go to shit. So this is a guy, even though you're looking at this 4.17 ERA, this 115 ERA plus, you would have to be so incredibly weary of. Um, and that's why it's so important for assessing relievers. Um, if this guy comes to me and, he's, and he wants a contract extension, he's probably not getting it at the end of the year because I know deep down he didn't pitch all that well, even though a lot of the surface stats say so. Josh Smoker, 28 innings pitched. Uh, we're looking at an ERA of 3.49. As you can see, 10.8 strikeouts uh, per nine innings. Uh, very good. 3.5 walks per nine innings. That's much better than uh, what we had. And then 0.6 home runs per nine innings. That's great. Um, so he ends up with 0.5 war, uh, 123 ERA plus. And if you look at his uh, pitching stats... I am going to go to view expanded pitching stats too. Once again, to view uh, FIP, fielding independent pitching, he's 3.07. So this basically suggests that this guy pitched well and he um, is going to continue to back that up. Um, so this is a guy that I would have more confidence in, even though his numbers really aren't that different on the surface uh, compared to the other relievers. So that's sort of the lesson to be learned. So definitely look at fielding independent pitching for relievers. As you can see, his betting average on balls in play, 3.92. Unlucky. So um, if anything, we would expect for him to get better in the coming innings and in the coming years. So that's sort of your lesson to be learned. Um, fielding independent pitching and F4, they have their weaknesses when it comes to assessing starting pitching, and you have to be aware of those, but they also really has their strengths when it comes to assessing relievers. As far as predicting future performance, um, I would definitely look for fielding independent pitching uh, more so than looking at someone's uh, ERA for the next year. All right, so we've learned some uh, new stats. We've learned about whip. We've learned about strikeouts per nine innings, walks per nine innings, home runs per nine innings. We've talked about ERA. We've talked about FIP. We've talked about F war, which is the war used in this game, short for Fangraphs war. We've talked about batting average and balls in play and how that can affect pitchers as well, it's just as much as hitters. And uh, yeah, I hope this was uh, very informative. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with a, another video very soon. I'm going to continue to pump these out pretty regularly. And uh, yeah, I will be back on the subreddit uh, when I have an, my next sort of batch of videos. I don't know if that'll be three, four, or five, but I think that's more, I think it's better than just flooding the subreddit with YouTube links. All right. Well, I will talk to you guys later, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're enjoying the series so far.